me today. My name is Kathy. This is Kathy's Country Life. If you're new, thank you for being here. Um, some of my older watchers, have, viewers, know that sometimes I get on here and I look like crap. It's my day off. This is my do my chores, my cleaning, my laundry, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't put makeup on and I just brush my hair, pull it back. It's just blah, blah. But that's okay. We're a family here and we don't have to look perfect all the time. So today we are going to make, I've got a cooking video planned for today. Um, but first off, we're going to make a dessert. It's a dessert that I found online. I don't remember where, how, when, what. But I found it online and it's called a chocolate nutter butter ice box cake. So I wanted to go ahead and get this started because I think it needs to sit in the refrigerator for several hours before we eat it. And it looks very easy and it looks very delicious. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started. I've got a sauce pot out here. I will bring you down. And it calls for the cook and serve chocolate jello mix, not the instant. The um, recipe note said that the instant does not work as well as the cook and serve. And it said to get two small 3.4 ounce boxes. My grocer did not have 3.4 ounce boxes. It had five ounce boxes. So I got two of them, which is a lot more than we need, but that's okay. It's chocolate pudding. We can eat chocolate pudding. So I'm going to, I didn't want to have not enough, but well, what I'll do is, let's see. So I need 6.8 ounces. So I'm going to put this whole five ounces in because that'll be better because I need to follow the directions because it's And then I'm just going to guesstimate. Whew. So there's. Okay, I'm going to guesstimate that that is the 6.8 ounces that we need. I will say this. For one of those desperate times where you just have to have something chocolate. Okay, and to this, we are going to need one and a half cups of sugar. Mmm. Mmm. Yep, one and a half cups is going to be sweet. Some vanilla. Sorry about that. Okay, so then I'm going to use. Um, four cups of milk. And I'm using whole milk. Up, and then we're gonna go to the stove and we're gonna cook it over medium heat um, stirring constantly and then when once it is softly boiling we'll take it off the heat so I'm gonna go do that okay that took about 12 minutes for it to come up to a softly rolling bowl. Now I have taken it off. It does not say to let it cool or anything. So it says take a third of the mixture and put into the bottom of an eight by eight or nine by nine. I kind of thought the eight by eight would be a little bit too small. And I don't, I think that this is bigger than a nine by nine, but it's okay. <clears throat> it 
and I kind of understand the um, you use the cook and serve because it's hot it's a little thinner and I think it's going to melt into these nutter butters and make it soft so we're just going to line the bottom with the nutters I love these cookies it said get a one pound thing, but all they, well, this is one pound. It's like, but all they had was 16 ounces. Okay, that's one pound. Whew, may not have enough. We're just going to layer this up. Chocolate, nutter butters, chocolate, nutter butters, chocolate. And then we're going to let it sit on the counter and cool. And once it cools down, we'll put it in the refrigerator. And when we're ready to eat, you top it with Cool Whip. It also says you can melt a fourth of a cup of peanut butter and then drizzle that on top. We may do that. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the layers. Okay. Got all that, and it took every bit of this chocolate pudding. I'm just trying to scrape the bottom and get over some of them that are showing. I have a feeling that this is going to be delish and so easy. Okay, now then, oh, I have to do an official taste test by wiping the ends, the edges. Yep, that's some sweet pudding. That was some sweet pudding. Okay, so we are going to, I'm going to just put this over to the side, let it cool completely, and then I put it in the refrigerator. I had no nutter butters left. I was hoping for a snack. And when I come back, I'll have hopefully a better grasp of my kitchen. And we're going to cook um, some meatloaf, some squash zucchini and corn casserole, and something green. Hadn't decided yet. We're ready to rumble now. Okay, first thing we're going to do is this squash, zucchini, corn, casserole. So, what I've done is I sliced, there's a fly, I sliced up um, about five small yellow squashes. And then one medium sized zucchini. And then I chopped up one onion and sauteed it till it's all soft and gushy. So I did that off camera. So I'm going to bring it down and we're going to put the rest of the ingredients in. Okay, so I need to do I'm half in the recipe. I'll post it in the um, description box below, but I'm doing half because I didn't have enough squash. It called for, I think, one and a half pounds of squash, one and a half pounds of zucchini, and I had almost a pound of squash, but I am just going to kind of play with it myself on the recipe. And then a fourth of a cup of sour cream. I 
I did salt and pepper the squash while it was sauteing. Okay, need about, I'm going to do probably a cup of cheddar cheese. And then I think this is, yeah, this is Parmesan cheese. This is probably two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. And then I got out and thawed out some corn that I had cut off the cob and froze. So I'm going to put about a cup of this in. And I'll cook this the rest of it up in the next day or two. And then I'm going to add just some breadcrumbs, just maybe a half a cup. Oh, you know what I missed? Two eggs. I'm just going to mix it in in here. Probably should have done one egg. That'd be alright. I should have done one egg. The recipe was for two eggs, and I was trying to do half of it. But that's okay. Mix it really good in. Okay. I'm just going to top it with just a few more breadcrumbs. It called for um, melting butter and putting that on top, but I'm going to skip that part. And then a little bit more of the cheddar cheese on top. Okay, so I'm not putting this in the oven yet. It's too early, but I'm going to set it aside. When we do bake it, we're going to bake it on 350, but... I'll keep you up to date on that. Okay, we are back. I'm kind of up close. We don't want you to get too close. Um, we're going to start on the meatloaf now, and I'll bring you down, show you what we're going to do. Okay, I'm just using this pan that I sauteed the. I washed it. So I'm just going to use it as my mixing bowl. Okay, so I've got a cup and a half of milk. Let me get a little bit more. A cup, of half, a cup and a half of milk, and I'm going to add breadcrumbs to the milk. That's probably three-fourths of a cup. And then I got two eggs beaten, and I'll add it in here. Then we're going to stir it up, and we're going to let those breadcrumbs rehydrate. I'm going to put a little bit more, we'll say an even cup. And we're just going to let the breadcrumbs rehydrate and get mushed up. So I've got two grounds of, of ground beef. I finely chopped some bell peppers. 
This is probably how a third of a cup. We'll say a third of a cup. And then I finally chopped some onions. This was um, one medium sized onion. Okay. Then we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. This is a fourth of a teaspoon. Some black pepper. Some Worcestershire, probably about a tablespoon, and then some ketchup, which I meant to have this open before I got back on here. Now I did make um, on a video the crackle barrel. And I wasn't that fond of it. It was good, but it was sweet, very sweet. Had a lot of sugary in there. So we're going to put half a cup of that. Then we're going to add in our milk, egg, and breadcrumb mixture. Uh, hang on. Okay, sorry about that. Somebody's pulling down the drive for Chris. So we're just going to mix all this together. I'm hoping I don't have to get my hands in there. But yes, it looks loosey goosey, but that's okay. I have got my oven preheating to 350. This is just a basic meatloaf recipe. Got a casserole dish. It's one of the smaller ones. And we're going to dump this in. And I'm not doing it as a loaf. I'm doing it like this. So this is going to go into a 350 degree oven. I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes and then we're going to pull it out and we're going to put some ketchup on top. Um, just plain giant ketchup on top. Nothing, no special sauce. Um, you know, nothing like that. Just plain old ketchup. So I'm going to stick this. No, I'm not. It's just at 305. So when this preheats, we're going to put this in the oven for 30 minutes. Next up is potatoes. Okay, so these are some that I dug from my garden. <clears throat> they were in that cardboard box, and they did not get big. So they're little. They are not good storage potatoes. They have, they're, they're thin, their skins are really um, thin. Sorry, has been interruptions. Um, so anyway, they're very thin skinned. Even when I was scrubbing them, some of the skin came off. So we need to use these. I really like mashed potatoes with um, meatloaf, but I don't feel like really peeling all these little jokers, so we're just going to roast them. So I'm going to just cut them up in bite sizes, and I'm, oops, I got my cast iron skillet out we're going to do it in, and I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom, and then we will continue on. And some of these, 
like that little fella. I'm just going to toss in. Yes, I saved them. They are edible. I went to Cash. Cash is my poodle, if you're new. Um, and he swallowed a squeaker out of a toy when he was being boarded when we went out of town. And so he had to have surgery and the stitches and all that stuff. And he finally got his first bath today. I took him to the groomer. And he is so pretty. I used to keep his ears real fluffy, but they trimmed his ears. I'll get a picture and insert it right here. <clears throat> but he's doing so good now. Okay, my, hus my husband. See, got him on my mind, irritated because he interrupted me. I'm going to go put the um, meatloaf in the oven, just preheat. Okay, so my oven. It has been giving me fits. On just regular bake, it won't get up past 220 degrees. I have to put it on convection bake to get it to 350 degrees, but the convection, you don't hear the fan, the fan going. So it has something to do with the fan. So I'm, I'm treating it like it's just a regular um, bake instead of a confection bake because normally when I put the convection on, that fan whirls up and you know you can hear it. It's spinning all that hot air around. So it has something to do with that. I'm going to have to get a repairman out because I love my oven and I don't want to have to buy a new one. That would totally stink. That one had a bad spot. Okay. Almost done. Almost done. I'm so hungry. drizzle with it just a little bit more olive oil then I've just got some dried crushed um, rosemary I'm going to sprinkle all over I love rosemary and, and potatoes they're just so good okay then we're going to put some salt Half a teaspoon, some pepper, and some garlic powder. And get in there with our hands, mix it all up, get all the potatoes coated in the oil. Oil. Because these aren't in a, a um, single layer, I will be um, giving these a toss every once in a while while they're in the oven. But I'm going to, those are kind of big, but I'm going to wait just a little bit before I put them in. It's 
seems like all of my dishes has got a, a similar taste profile. Um, so I'll be back when our meatloaf has been in for 30 minutes. Okay, here I got some green beans out of um, my garden, which I've not gotten any, and I just went up there the other day and I was able to pick some. Not enough to can or anything like that. So I just put some olive oil, some butter in the bottom of the skillet. I added some salt, some garlic, and we are just going to saute these until they're, they get a little bit soft. And that'll be our little, our little side item too. So we're just going to let these sit here and go. Garlic smells delicious. Okay. Sigh. My oven's acting quirky. I had put it in, set it for 30 minutes. When I came back, um, the oven was down on 300, so it was going down. So I had to turn it off, turn it back on. I kicked it up to 425. I think it's hovering about 375 right now. And I hope it don't keep going down. But I got the meatloaf to the point that I wanted it. And I drain the grease off of it, and then we're just going to top it with some ketchup. I don't have an amount, I just do it till it's covered. I like a good bit of ketchup, Chris doesn't. So I kind of go a little heavy handed for his taste, but that's okay. He can scrape some of it off. Okay, so I've got the potatoes in and I've also got the squash casserole in. And we will continue on with the cooking process. And I'll tell you how long this takes. Okay, this has cooled at room temperature and then I, it's been in the refrigerator about two, two and a half hours. I'm going to go ahead and top it with the whipped cream. Whipped topping. It's not homemade. This is an easy breezy recipe. I think this is going to be rich and delicious. Now, I think, I just bought that one pound pack of Nutter Butters, but I think you should buy the family pack and then you'll have some to crunch and put over it. I think that would be nice. Or you can just keep the rest of it as a snack. <laughs> Which I had wished I had done. I was starving at the time I was making this. Okay. Now then, the recipe said a fourth of a cup of peanut butter melted. But this is a natural peanut butter. It's really loosey goosey anyway. So I think I'm just going to use this and just drizzle it over. May not be the prettiest thing, but we're just going to drizzle. Yeah, I think some crunched up um, Nutter Butters would be very pretty on this. Okay. So 
So I'm going to put this back into the refrigerator, let it continue chilling. And yes, I just did that. I love Cool Whip. Okay, so the green beans are done. Everything else is in the oven cooking. Oh, and then when I put the, um, it's down to 340. I've turned it off, kicked it back up to 450. Just so it. Please don't have to make me have to get another stove. Mm. All right, we'll be back. Got a little dark right there because I had the temperature up so high. But that's okay. Look at there! Look at there! Okay, finally. So, I know the meatloaf and the squash is very hot. Try the potato. Mmm, so good. So good! Mmm, mmm, so good. The squash. Mmm, that's so good. So good. Mm, mm. Meatloaf. So good. Mm, mm. Okay. And then a green bean. Delicious. I don't have any bread or anything with it. I'm also make cornbread with my oven acting all crazy. I didn't want to deal with that. Um. Oh, that was one of them green bean strings. That was a tough one. Um, so I'm going to sit down and eat and then we're going to pull the dessert out and taste that. So hang on. That dinner was right on time. Oh, it was good. It was good. So it's dessert time. My favorite part of the meal, after we ate, I fixed my in-laws, I fixed them a plate, and Chris is going over there to take that to them. And I'm dishing me up some dessert. Hang on. Hang on again. That's what it looks like. I'm so excited. The Nutter Butters have softened up. They still got a little Christmas bit, Christmas to them. Oh, baby Jesus, that is so good. Thank you, Lord, for chocolate and nutter butters. That is so good. I really thought that it was going to be too sweet with that sugar in there, but it's not. But it's not. Mm, that is so easy. You can make this. That is delicious. This is going in my keepers. This would be great for when we have potlucks at church and stuff to bring a dessert. Mm. And I think as the days go on, it being in the refrigerator, it'll get softer and softer. But oh yes, make that. So simple. You don't even have to be a baker to make that. Mmm, delicious. Delicious. I'm covering it up in cellophane. I'm putting it back in the fridge.
refrigerator. And now I'm going to sit down and enjoy my dessert. It's so good. Okay. Thanks, guys, for being here. Another Cooking with Kathy show. And um, I appreciate y'all. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. I think I've got 41 more subscribes left till I hit 1,000. And that was my goal to do it by August. So I'm getting there. Um, so if you haven't already subscribed, please um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I really, really would appreciate it. And I will see y'all next time. Love y'all. Bye.